have some water and my... Oh, I'll try not to hit the... Uh, I've probably made a big bang on the um, microphone. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Because I'm probably going to need some water for... I'm not going to inject it. It's for me water. I'm probably going to need some for, with this. So, the next two I'm going to have were actually donated by a good friend of mine who um, used to work for me. Uh, when I was working at the whiskey shop in York, um, I my assistant manager left and I needed to get a new assistant manager and my bosses told me, yeah, we're not gonna hire we're not gonna hire it, we're not gonna advertise it, but I want you to go and find somebody. We trust you, idiots. Um, so I ended up employing a guy called John Pitt, who when I left the whiskey shop to go on to pastures new and probably made a mistake, um, he took over as the manager and was there for another I think four or five years quite possibly. Um, before he um, ended up um, meeting uh, a girl and um, moving out to Pennsylvania, the jammy bastard. So he now lives in Pennsylvania, um, but he sent me a, a selection of whiskies that he's acquired, um, I think over the years, um, two of which were uh, rice. So I thought, right, why not just carry on with this rye theme and, and we'll, um, we'll carry on with that. So very attractively packaged. John, thank you very much. Um, Yes, here's a picture of John now. Um, he's a dapper gentleman, as I'm sure you'll agree. Uh, really nice bloke as well. Um, top draw. If you ever come across John, he's absolutely fantastic. Um, so he sent me um, a couple of rides in amongst, I think they're all American whiskies. And um, this particular one, I have been able to find very little about. This is what the bottle looks like. There's nothing there, because I don't actually know what this is. Um, MGP is a uh, company who have a distillery in uh, Lawrenceburg. Now this isn't Lawrenceburg in Kentucky. And I'm just gonna turn my notes over because I've, I need to make sure I get these right. When I did the Cougar bourbon, who's uh, the number of the dram, I can't remember which one it was, but it was fairly early on. Um, Cougar bourbon, I said, was from a distillery in Lawrenceburg, Kentucky. And it turns out that there is another Lawrenceburg and it's not in Kentucky, it's actually in Indiana. And um, this distillery, which is, is owned by MGP, was actually um, founded in 1847 and was bought by Seagram's, the fairly large drinks company, in 1933, which over the years, when Seagram's went bust in the, um, I think we're looking at late, no, we're looking at early 2000s, uh, they were, they essentially went bust, went into administration. Pernod Ricard acquired the distillery along, along with other parts of, of the Seagram's business and in 2006 were intended to close down what was called the, um, I think it was the Lawrenceburg Distillery, the Lawrenceburg Distillery essentially. Um, it was sold to a holding company in 2007 who themselves cocked it up and um, in 2011 were about to um, close it themselves. Uh, they, in fact, they went into administration and it was basically being sold off on the cheap. Uh, Lawrenceburg, um, Indiana is here. Um, so this company called MGP, who are a Kansas-based distilling company, um, bought the distillery and um, took it over themselves. Now, MGP is essentially a corporate distiller. So um, this distills for own label um, and other companies. So there is very little that they do themselves. Diageo is their biggest customer. So Bullet, Bourbon and Rye is made there. Uh, George Dickel, which is a rye whiskey, is almost made there. Uh, Bullet Bourbon might not be made there, but the Bullet Rye definitely is. Um, so I could be wrong about the Bullet Bourbon, don't hold me on that, but the George Dickel Rye, that is also. So a number of um, rye, particularly rye uh, whiskies that you may well have heard of are actually made at this one distillery, and they also make Cougar as well. So. You know, George Dickel sounds fantastic, and oh, it's very traditional, and this, this, and the other. It's made f for Diageo by another company. It's another one of Diageo's things of making things sound better than they actually are. So this particular one is quite unusual because this is actually a, uh, a, a MGP's own bottling, but I can't find any information about it. I can't find like what the bottle is or where it's got it from, and I've forgotten to get in touch with John, and it's really late, so I'm just going to crack on with it and not have a picture of the bottle. His no, his little label, dinky little label, uh, is uh, it's a seven-year-old rye that's bottled at 59.8%, so I've got my water ready. And we shall just see what happens with it, because 
this could be pretty rare. An MGP, to be honest, doesn't get a particularly good reputation, almost because it's one of these where it's like, well, you're making it for other people, so it can't be that good, because what if it was that good, why wouldn't you be selling it yourself? Which is a fair argument. So in terms of how much this is, no idea. In terms of what it looks like, not a clue. It's a seven-year-old. I put MGP seven-year-old right into Google, nothing, nothing at all. Um, there's a redemption right, which might be made by MGP, but it's not 59.8%. Smooth Ambler as well, Smooth Ambler, which I did, I'm gonna say last week. Um, their rye whiskey is from MGP, so that's why I'm, th I'm thinking MGT, MGP maybe just do rye whiskey and not bourbon. Somebody will no doubt correct me in the comments, but um, yeah, the Smooth Ambler Rye, the old scout that they do, the one that they've sourced, is actually from MGP. So it makes me wonder where they've got the bourbon from, although that was really good. Anyway, we'll get on with this one. So a seven-year-old rye, 59.8%, and it is pretty hot, pretty hot on the nose. It's gonna clear your nose out if you've got a cold. There's some sweetness on there, but the alcohol percentage is slightly overpowering. There is some sweetness and it's um, kind of like a nice raisiny sweetness. Not too far off a bourbon, to be honest. It's not as spicy as I thought it would be for being a rye whiskey. What I also don't know is also what the percentage is. Is this like 70% uh, rye? How much rye? How much barley? How much corn? That sort of thing. I'm willing to bet it's not that high a rye percentage simply because... I've, I've, yeah, I definitely didn't find anything down. Simply because there's sweetness in there which is probably corn so maybe 60-70% rye with about 30-20-30% corn and maybe a bit of barley now the burn from the alcohol is all around the outside of my mouth but it's not in the back of my throat and it's not in the center of my mouth. And it's really strange. It's like it this alcohol heat, which isn't overpowering, surrounds a center of sweetness. It's like this is really toffeed, really toffee, soft caramel center, literally center in the middle of my mouth. It's really weird. There's a nuttiness to it as well. It's kind of like a hazelnut praline with kind of this caramel, but it's like, it's like hazelnut praline, but then also soft caramel, soft, really sweet caramel as well. I'm gonna add some water to it. This is really unusual, but really distinctive. And I wouldn't necessarily have said it was a straight rye. bit more water I thought I'd put too much in but it's still it's still uh, the aroma is still quite hot I want to really try and open it out that's better the sweetness comes through now there is the definite nuttiness to it and it's kind of hazelnuts and brazil nuts caramel element is slightly subdued with adding the water in and the a more nuttiness comes through unusual really really unusual I wasn't expecting it to be so nutty and it's not it's it kind of slightly drying but it's not spicy it's a definite kind of nut brittle um, nut praline that kind of vibe to it Needs a fair chunk of water in it though to really kind of knock that fire down. Mmm. Bit more toffee element on that. Absolutely nuts. Literally. That's pretty much the overriding feel of it. Not quite as intense as the, what was it, the Borders Grain um, that I had uh, ooh, last month. A while back, that really was intense hazelnuts, but this is definite, kind of like a, um, you know, you get your bowl of nuts at Christmas and it's got hazelnuts and um, Brazil nuts and monkey nuts. 
and pecans as well actually pecan pecan pie that sort of thing I'm trying to keep with that american theme of, of the whiskey that we're doing pecan pie where it's got that treacly element to it as well maybe not quite as burnt as a treacle but kind of pecans uh candied pecans that sort of thing unusual odd i'm not a big fan of nuts so i'm not sure whether i'm like this or not but trying to be neutral trying to be as objective about it as possible if you like nuts I think that's well worth trying because it's an unusual right whiskey hmm John cheers mate thanks for that the next one we're going to have is actually one of yours as well but um, that is quite distinctive you did say it was interesting and you were right um, right I'll do a quick rinse out and then I should crack on with another one quickly cheers <laughs> 